Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me today. And this episode is about Operation Venetic. This is an operation dedicated to the hacking of a messaging platform called EncroChat. The FBI and various other law enforcement agencies believe that EncroChat was being used by mainly criminals. Because a lot of people think applications such as WhatsApp are encrypted and can't be accessed by the police. But very easily, if the police need to gain access to something, they can. But EncroChat was a lot harder than that. They had to actually hack it. So law enforcement agencies had to use techniques in order to install malware onto the operating systems of EncroChat. Thomas Mayer, 39, from Warrington, appeared at Liverpool Crown Court on the 25th of September. He's pleaded guilty to two charges of importing Class A drugs into the UK and two charges of money laundering. The National Crime Agency arrested Mayer following evidence acquired through EncroChat, the encrypted messaging service that was brought down in June, they say, as part of Operation Venetic. We're going to talk about in this episode, evidence suggesting that the police knew about EncroChat a long time before June. And this story shows how they've built a case solely based on messages from this service. But before we talk about the case that Thomas has been found guilty of, I'm going to go back to a story that I referenced in earlier coverage of this. We've done several videos on EncroChat. It feels like I'm doing one every week on a case related to it. The first media agency to speak about it was Vice News. And Vice News often speak to criminals in the underworld anonymously in order to gain information. And this article from June was talking about how EncroChat was hacked. This was written by Joseph Cox and it was an interview with an anonymous drug dealer who went by the pseudonym of Mark. It says earlier on in the year, police kept arresting associates of Mark. He was a UK based drug dealer and Mark took the security of his operation very seriously. The gang was using code names to discuss business on custom encrypted phones by a company called EncroChat. The messages were encrypted on the device themselves and the police couldn't tap the group phones or intercept messages as authorities normally would do with other operating systems. On EncroChat, criminals spoke openly and negotiated drug deals in very great detail. They even included price lists, names of customers and explicit references to the large quantity of drugs they sold according to documents obtained by Vice News at the time. At first, he said he thought it was a coincidence that in the same time frame, police across the UK and Europe busted a wide range of criminals in mid-June. Authorities picked up an alleged member of another drug gang a few days later. Law enforcement agencies seized millions of dollars worth of illegal drugs in Amsterdam. It's as if police were detaining people from completely unrelated gangs at the same time. In one message intercepted, it said that the police were all over it. And unbeknownst to Mark and tens of thousands of other users of EncroChat, their messages were not secure. French authorities had penetrated the EncroChat network and leveraged the access to install a technical tool in what appears to be a mass hacking operation, otherwise known as a virus or malware. They say they've been reading the user's communications for months. So they only started to do the raids in the UK and the arrests in the middle of June, but they had been gathering information on this for a long time. They shared the messages with agencies around Europe and it was back in June that they started to see the exact scale of the infiltration. And EncroChat users go from Europe to the Middle East and elsewhere. French, Dutch and other European agencies monitored and investigated more than 100 million encrypted messages sent between Encro users in real time, leading to arrests in the UK, Norway, Sweden, France and the Netherlands. A team of international law enforcement agencies announced as dealers plan trades, money launderers wash their proceeds and criminals discuss their next murder. Officers read every message and started to take their suspects off the street. Thank you, Andy. Good afternoon. On behalf of Europol, I would like to congratulate all partners, France, the Netherlands, Eurojust, 
on this very successful operation and express my sincere gratitude for the excellent and intense international cooperation during this investigation. An investigation that, as a consequence, gave law enforcement an unprecedented, as has been said before, look into the heart of organized crime all along the illicit trafficking chains. And it provides Europol with insights into the use of violence, physical harm, murders, kidnappings, abductions against rivals as part of the debt recovery for revenge and or to maintain discipline and cohesion within the criminal networks. Violence that's often executed in the open and that has direct impact on our EU citizens. We don't know, we do really know that criminal profits derived from these activities are enormous and are tunneled into a laundered by sophisticated parallel financial criminal systems, providing uh, various illegal financial services such as laundering proceeds, <coughs> transferring of funds, and reinvesting in our legal economies. So this importance of this operation cannot be stressed enough. As a result of this investigation, uh, on the more general picture, Europol is able to create and provide a unique insight on the scale and functioning of organized crime in the European Union, and even more on a global scale. This very valuable information will help law enforcement in Europe now and in the future uh, to fight criminals more successfully uh, uh, in their tasking. The messages have given insight into an unprecedented large number of serious crimes, including large international drug shipments and drug lab murders, robberies, extortions, grave assaults and hostage takings. Also, international drugs and money laundering corridors became very clear to Dutch law enforcement. The documents obtained by Vice News detail some of the information intercepted by authorities and that were laid out some of the actions of one of the alleged dealers, but show just how deeply law enforcement seems to have breached the illegal criminal organisation. The messages show how gangs allegedly directed members to gather money from customers, how to launder it safely, where to hide drugs in meticulous and timestamp sections. The EncroChat messages lay out alleged crime after crime. One message said people are fucked. One of the sources who provided the documents, people talk about murder, buying kilos, buying guns, millions of pills, all on the phone. They refer to large scale drug dealing and serious crime. In the Netherlands alone, the investigation has so far led to 100 suspects being arrested. The seizure of 8,000 kilos of cocaine, 1,200 kilos of crystal meth, the dismantling of 19 drug labs, the seizure of dozens of firearms, automatic weapons, expensive watches and 25 cars. They found £20 million cash in a hidden compartment in one of them cars as well. The National Crime Agency in the Netherlands said in a press conference they've captured messages that give us a view into the daily life of the criminal underworld. And one of them, EncroChat says, enter end security solution that, that can guarantee anonymity. And that messaging using EncroChat is the electronic equivalent to a regular conversation between two people in an empty room. A worry-free communications. It says that our servers are located offshore on a data center that never create, store or decrypt keys, message conversations or user data. There are many types of people who may want to secure communications, including security professionals or even lawyers. The site states that EncroChat has resellers in Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Madrid and Dubai. But the firm is highly secretive and does not operate like a normal technology company. Recently, a lot of competitors are trying to fill that gap in the market by offering different types of communication. For example, different servers that are based in Russia, like Secure Sims on Instagram. EncroChat positions itself as a legitimate company with customers in 140 countries. Sources in the criminal underworld told Vice News that many of the EncroChat customers are criminals. French authorities said they estimated 90% of the French customers were involved in criminal activity. Buying an EncroChat phone was not as simple as walking into a store. A current prison inmate told Vice News, who said they'd previously used EncroChat devices, he explained that we bought a phone from a specific contact that was recommended to them. He does have a legitimate shop, but he wouldn't meet me there. I met him down a side street and it looked like a drug deal. The inmate said of how he got the phone. EncroChat phones are essentially modified Android devices 
with some models using the BQ Aquarius X2, an Android handset released in 2018 by a Spanish by a Spanish company, according to leaked documents, said that EncroChat took the base unit and installed its own encrypted messaging program that routes messages through their own servers and even physically removed the GPS, camera and microphone functionality from the phone. EncroChat's phones had a feature that could quickly wipe the device if the user entered a PIN and it ran on two operating systems side by side. If a user wanted the device to appear innocuous, they booted onto a normal Android. If they wanted to return to their sensitive chats, they switched over to the EncroChat system. The company sold the phones on a subscription-based model, costing thousands of dollars every year per device. EncroChat is not the only company offering these sorts of phones. So-called secure phone companies don't have public-facing executives. Instead, they hide their ownership. They have been caught, in some cases, conspiring with with criminals. One of the founders of a company called MPC, Vincent Ramos, started as a legitimate firm and they are currently in prison for telling undercover agents that he created the device to help with drug trafficking. These companies regularly hire distributors based in different countries and cities. And it also goes into mention about the case of Paul Massey. I covered this story in depth as well. You can find that video on the channel. The hitman who killed him, who was described by the media as the Iceman, used EncroChat in both of the assassinations that he did. And I will leave a link in the description for that story. In May of 2020, some EncroChat users noticed a problem with their phone. The wiping feature was not working. An EncroChat associate told Vice News at the time they believed that it was maybe a glitch or the user had forgotten their PIN. The month after, EncroChat managed to track down a particular X2 model that had the panic wipe issue. They explained the wiping issue wasn't an error. The EncroChat associate said they found malware on the phone. The phone had been hacked. The associate told Vice News that this affected its wiping feature. The malware was also designed to conceal itself from detection and record the screen lock password and clone application data. Realising it was an attack, over the next two days, EncroChat did an update on the X2 models to restore the phone's features and gather information about the malware installed on the devices around the world. This was done to prevent further damage. EncroChat put monitoring in place to be able to keep an eye on the devices without physically having the phones in their hands. But immediately after the update, the attackers struck again. This time it was even worse. The malware was back and now it changed the password on the lock and it didn't just record it. It was at this point that EncroChat went into full emergency mode and it sent a message to its users informing them of the ongoing attack. The company also informed its SIM provider, Dutch communication firm KPN, which then blocked the connections to the malicious server. They claimed that EncroChat cut its own SIM system and they did not know if their provider, the service provider, was working with the authorities. Shortly after EncroChat restored SIM service, KPN, the service provider, removed the firewall, allowing the hackers to communicate with the phones again. EncroChat was trapped. And that also showed the server providers were not safe from authorities. EncroChat shut itself down completely. Due to the level of sophistication of the attack and the malware code, they could no longer guarantee the security of the device. A message was sent to users telling them to power off and dispose of the device immediately. This opened up the world of EncroChat to the authorities. They seen everything. Massive piles of narcotics, kilogram blocks of cocaine, bags packed with ecstasy. There was messages about drug drops and major deals, photos of family members and discussion of other business. And this case is a perfect example of how they're using EncroChat to then launch surveillance to then find more crimes to build a better investigation. Thomas Mayer was described as a logistics man for a number of different crime groups. He played a key role in important criminal infrastructure in the UK. He was able to use his contacts and business to facilitate large amounts of Class A drugs to enter the UK in Ireland. He lived in England, but he was actually an Irishman by his registration on his business. He was able to ship out large amounts of cash 
after taking a cut for himself. Operation Venetic, the police say, has halted thousands of criminal conspiracies and led to the arrests of hundreds of suspects. And Thomas Mayer was undoubtedly one of the most significant. They watched him over a seven month period during which he met with associates at hotels in public spaces in the Northwest to organise the trafficking of cocaine from Holland to the UK and Ireland. EncroChat messages obtained through the NCA investigation showed in April 2020 he orchestrated the collection and delivery of at least 21 kilos of cocaine from locations in the Netherlands and associates reported back to Mayer as the drugs were picked up, transported and arrived at their final destinations in Ireland. On the 2nd of April, an exchange took place in the Netherlands where 11 kilos of cocaine was passed between two vehicles. Two days later, the arrival of the drugs by Dev Dunkirk to Dover and eventually Donna Bait near Dublin was confirmed. Messages showed that Thomas had discussed splitting the profits with one of his group. In another job, Thomas made arrangements for 10 kilos of cocaine to be collected from an area also in the Netherlands and this was to be delivered to the outskirts of Dublin. He also got paid for doing this. As well as drugs, Thomas also helped to facilitate the movement of large amounts of cash. One charge relates to arranging for 305,000 euros to be transported from Ireland to Holland on behalf of one of his associates. He took a commission for his involvement in this deal. In May, in Drada, Ireland, they see £600,000 that was in transit and arrested three people. They say Thomas arranged the movement of this cash also. And you may remember our story about Keen Woods and Robbie Lawler and the Drada feud as well. So you can go and reference them stories for more history on that area. Officers from the NCA arrested him on the 13th of June 2020 at his home in Warrington in the UK. He was charged two days later and remanded in custody until today's plea at Liverpool Crown Court. He's going to be sentenced on the 1st of December. Assistant Commissioner John O'Griscoll said that the UK National Crime Agency has developed a very productive working relationship with Irish police, resulting in communities in the United Kingdom and Ireland to be better protected to avoid detection. So it shows how every single one of the messages made whatever was going on a lot worse when they actually started to follow him. This isn't the first time that Thomas has been in the news as well. Going back to October in 2019, he featured in news all over the world due to the fact that his wife was named as the owner of a lorry that 39, at the time, Chinese, they believed, it was later determined Vietnamese, migrants who died in the back of a lorry in Essex. Thomas was a haulage bus and his wife also. They lived in the north of England, as it states in his court papers. He was named as the owner of the lorry that the people died in. He previously sold several months before. But Miss Mayer and her husband Thomas told the papers that they sold the lorry cab a year ago to a company from Northern Ireland. And this truck, they said, was sold to a company in County Monaghan who worked with the driver Mo Robinson, 25 who has actually pleaded guilty to the manslaughter of all 39. At the time talking to the papers that was happy to come forward and the lorry was a refrigerated unit that contained 39 bodies and was registered last year. So this was very strange that he was involved in this case but nothing come from it. It'll be interesting to see what sentence he gets for this and I'm definitely going to keep following EncroChat cases as they all come out over the coming days and weeks. I really appreciate you joining me today. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Follow us online as well at Scar City Studios. And please don't forget to share as well. I really appreciate you joining me. Peace. At Eurojust. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Han Moraal. I'm the national member for the Netherlands at Eurojust. And on behalf of Eurojust, I would like to welcome you here at the premises of Eurojust the EU Agency for Judicial Operational uh, Cooperation. This welcome is first of all for the invited guests, so for you, the international press. Today we welcome you to listen to French, Dutch and EU judicial and law enforcement authorities who will present to you an international criminal investigation and prosecution. A case about a joint investigation team with the aim to dismantle Encro Chat, 
an encrypted phone network widely used by criminal networks. Today, we welcome from the French prosecution service, Mrs. Carole Etienne, public prosecutor from Lille, from the French Gendarmerie Nationale, Major General Jean-Philippe Lecouf, head of the National Criminal Investigation Department, and Captain Ludovic Dantec from the National Office for Criminal Cases. From the Dutch prosecution service, Mr. John Lucas, Chief Prosecutor of the National Prosecution Service. And from the Dutch National Police, Mrs. Janine van den Berg, Chief Constable of the Central Unit, and Mr. Andy Kraag, Head of the Central Investigations Division. From Europol, I warmly welcome Mr. Will van Geemert, Deputy Executive Director. And last but, last but not least, my colleague from Eurojust, Mr. Baudouin Touvenot. National Member for France at Eurojust. Ladies and gentlemen, both Europol and Eurojust supported the international cooperation between the French and Dutch prosecutors and police with substantial operational support, among others with support for a joint investigation team that has been successful due to the exemplary European cooperation of both law enforcement and prosecution. The results are impressive, and those results will now be shared with you by the French and Dutch authorities and also by Europol and Eurojust. The floor is for the first speaker, Mrs. Carole Etienne. Bonjour. Good afternoon, everyone. Since the a couple of weeks ago, we've uh, got um, partial or inexact information circulating on different European media on encrypted uh, and telephone technology, EncroChat, uh, after they issued an alert, a security alert to their clients uh, on the night to the, from the 12th to the 11th to the 13th of June, saying that their encrypted technology had been, they said, illegally seized by government entities, in their words. They ask their clients to throw away their devices. That is why today it seems to us necessary for us to provide objective information to the public. We would like to stress that our action was not in any way illegal. It was the result of a judicial investigation led by the Public Prosecutor's Office in Lille, an investigation which was opened after a number of seizures of proceeds from international criminal organizations based in Lille. It seems that these encrypted telephone devices and technology were used by clients at uh, very high prices because they promised anonymity and complete secrecy to their users. So their users were promised complete anonymity, complete discretion and privacy, and they were told that the telephones would not be able to be detected or traceable by any means. 